In this video, you will learn four different methods to get a specific range in Sheets with Google Apps Script. This is our demo data, and we want to learn how to get all of the data and sometimes only a subset of the data. And we'll do so by starting with the get data range method. Head over to the script editor if you want to follow along. And I already have it open here, and I've renamed the placeholder function to range on sheet. And the very first step is to access our sheet. So here we're accessing the active sheet and we're storing it in the sheet variable. And let me just go ahead and get the code snippets that we will be using. Let's start out with the first one. So I said we're going to use the get data range method, and it's going to give us back whatever cells contain any values. So what I'm effectively saying here is on our sheet, get the data range and give me back those values. Oops, let's make sure not to change anything here. And on line number five, we're locking out this to the console. So the first part, the data range is just a string to say what I'm logging out and then I'm logging out the value of data range. So let's run this. And since I already ran this before, I don't have to grant permission anymore. So what I see here, this is my string. And then here I have person score status. What is that? That is our first row, person score status. Our last row should be here, number seven, Elaine, 67 and past, Elaine, 67 and past. So it did exactly what, it is, what we expected it to do, namely get all of the data and log it out to the console. Now on to the method get range by using the A1 notation. Again, I have this over here. Let me just go ahead and copy and paste it. You might as well, oops, go ahead and stop the video if you want to type this out. So let's indent this correctly and let's save this. Here we're using the A1 notation. As you see, A1 um, colon B3. So that is the notation you see. If, let me go back to the sheets. You see when I like select this A1 B3. So let's actually try this out A1 B3. So when we run our function, this is what we should be getting back. So let's have a look again. I'm getting the range from A1 to B3. And again, I'm accessing the values within that range and I'm outputting it to the console. So um, let me go ahead and run that. The first one here is still our data range. And here you go, our range notation, person score up to Adam 56. Is that what we expected? Yes. So person score up to Adam in 56. So I guess that is probably the easiest way to get a very specific range if you don't want the entire range by using this A1 notation. Get range. Now we're going to use the get range method again, but this time we're going to do it a little bit differently because there's multiple ways to use the method and it depends on what four parameters you pass in. So again, let's save this here. We're using the get range method, but we're passing in one, one, five, two. So we're passing in four different parameters and then saying, get the values. What do you think? What do these four parameters stand for? Let's have a look at our class sheet method in our documentation. If you click on sheet and you scroll down, you'll find that there's multiple times the get range method listed, but with different parameters. So the first time would be with row and column, then with row, column, num rows. Oops, wrong scrolling. Here you go. Row, column, num rows, num columns. And if we scroll all the way down the A1 notation, which you saw before, so, but let me scroll back up because this is what I'm using in this method. So the first parameter stands for row index, where to start from which row onwards to give me back the data then from which column to start, then the number of the rows and the number of the columns. So if we head back into the editor, I'm saying start out row number one, 
colon number one or index actually not column number index and give me back five rows and two columns so start at one one and then the number of rows i think i said five so it should be up till here and number of columns two let's see if that worked so let's head back into here and let's run this again and the range row column i said two columns how do i know that this value stands for two columns and i said five rows so that would be one two three four oh, let me start again one two three four five okay starting at row number one so that worked out perfectly well that is another way and this is a way i often see in scripts that are out there um, you know available and that you might be copying so now you know how that works next method is get range by name now this method is a bit different because uh, what we're doing is we're, we're we're leveraging the power of named ranges what do i mean by that well have a look at this i can say maybe this is a range i have to come back to time and time again and i want to name this range now i've already done this for score and person you can see here score person and score actually so if i click on this um, let me see uh, ba -ba, data named ranges i want this here to appear so here you see that the a1 to b7 range is also accessible through the named range or through the name of person and score. And I can use that name range to access the values, but it's a bit different because this method is not available on the sheet object. It's available on the spreadsheet object. That is a difference. That's why I wrote this method for it, which I'm copying in right now go ahead and save this the reason why I'm using a separate method for this is just to showcase I need a spreadsheet so I need to get the active spreadsheet if I were to try to use this method on the sheet it would not work so I'm getting the active spreadsheet and then I'm saying spreadsheet get range by name and the range I need to use the name which is person and scores and then again get the values so let me go ahead and run this but obviously this time I need to run the right function which is this one let me run that there you go person score Jane all the way up until Elaine why because that is our named range if we go back and have a look from A1 to B7, A1 to B7, that's exactly that. So that's how you can use the get range by name, but on the spreadsheet object. Let me know what is your preferred way to get the data out of your sheet. And please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of our Google Apps Script video tutorials.